Okay, today we're doing module three, lesson 12. And your learning goal today is to be able to subtract fractions that are greater than or equal to one. We've been working on subtracting fractions, but a lot of times it's like a mixed number minus a fraction. Today we're going to talk about what happens when both fractions are greater than or equal to one. But let's first talk about the problem of the day. Let's take a look at this problem right here. We have 1 and 1 fifth minus 1 half. There are two different methods we're going to learn and talk about today. Okay, so let's not talk about method two yet. Method one involves subtracting 1 half from 1 and 1 fifth. Does that make sense? Because our problem says 1 and 1 fifth minus 1 half. So method one is simply subtracting that from 1 and 1 fifth. Here we're seeing that 1 and 1 fifth is the same as 1 plus 1 fifth, yes? Okay, and one, another way to say one is five-fifths. So is one and one-fifth the same as five-fifths plus one-fifth? Yeah. yeah, which is what? Six-fifths, right? And then we could do six-fifths minus one-half. I need to find my LCD of ten so that I can multiply, I can find equivalent fractions by multiplying six-fifths by two-halves and one-half by five-fifths to get twelve-tenths minus five-tenths equals seven-tenths. If I were to represent what I'm doing on a number line, I would look at this number line. Here I have one and one fifth, yes, is my starting point, and I'm going to subtract one half, and I end up at seven tenths. Okay? What questions do you have about method one? For method two, we're actually first subtracting one half from just the one, and then we're adding another one fifth. Okay? So the reason why that works is because I know that one and one fifth is the same as one plus one fifth, right? So now I'm going to pretend that my new problem is just 1. I'm going to ignore the 1 fifth part. I'm just going to do 1 minus 1 half. We know that 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. Now, why do I need to add back 1 fifth? Because my original number wasn't 1, huh? My original problem is 1 and 1 fifth. How much bigger is 1 and 1 fifth compared to 1? 1 fifth bigger. If I say that I'm going to give Alex $10, but I'm going to subtract half a dollar, how much does he get? Nine and a half dollars, right? But if I actually say instead of starting with ten dollars, I'm going to start with ten and one fifth dollars. I'm still going to subtract one half dollars. Will Alex have more or less than nine and one half dollars? How much more? One fifth more. That's why here we have to add back the one fifth. Same thing. My LCD is ten, but this time I'm adding one half and one fifth to get seven tenths. If I'm going to describe what I'm doing. Here is my number line. Instead of starting at 1 and 1 fifth this time, I'm starting at 1. And when I subtract 1 half, I have 1 half. And I have to add back that 1 fifth because, remember, my original number really is 1 and 1 fifth, not 1. Does that make sense? Okay, so if I subtract 1 half, I would really get to 7 tenths. Okay, let's talk about method 1 first. Remember, method 1 has us subtracting 6 sevenths directly from 1 and 3 fourths. So we can think of 1 and 3 fourths as 1 plus 3 fourths, and then we have to subtract 6 sevenths from that. Okay. What's another way to write 1? That might make sense here. Jack? 4 fourths. Yeah, we can say that 1 is the same thing as 4 fourths plus 3 fourths, and then of course we have to subtract 6 sevenths. Okay, if I have 4 fourths, I'm going to add another 3 fourths. Ella, how many fourths do I have altogether? Seven fourths, good. So let's write seven fourths minus six sevenths. Now we just need to find our LCD because we don't have the same denominator here. Aditi, what might be my least common denominator between four and seven? Twenty-eight. Yeah, so I know my LCD is twenty-eight. And now I can multiply to find equivalent fractions. I know that seven fourths, sorry, I'm going to move this out of the way. Seven fourths times what version of one? will give me a denominator of 28. Itai? 7 sevenths. 7 sevenths, yeah. And then I can multiply 6 sevenths by what version of 1 to get a denominator of 28? Ashwin? Uh, I can multiply 6 sevenths by 4 fourths. Okay. Now when I multiply, I should be able to get some equivalent fractions. 7 times 7 is? 49 28 6 times 4 is 24 28 
So my answer is 49 twenty-eighths, and I take away 24 of them. How many twenty-eighths do I have left? 25 twenty-eighths. Okay. okay. So method one is pretty much what we've been talking about, yes? What questions do you have about method one? Therefore, I can write on my number line, if I start at 1 and 3 fourths, which is right here, and I subtract 6 sevenths, I end up with 25 twenty-eighths. Now, method two asks us to subtract six sevenths from one first. So we're going to pretend that the problem isn't one and three fourths minus six sevenths. We're just going to pretend the problem is one minus six sevenths. Can we do that in our head? What is one minus six sevenths? One seven. One seven. Is that our final answer? Should our final answer be bigger or smaller than one seventh? Bigger. bigger. How much bigger? How come, it, how come we know that our final answer really should be three-fourths bigger than one-seventh? Itai? Uh, because you left out the three-fourths. Yeah, if I took away something before I even let you subtract it, is your answer going to be correct? No. no but if I give you back the three-fourths, it should be how much bigger? Three-fourths bigger than one-seventh. So how can we find our final answer then? Lakshan? You can add one-seventh to three-fourths. You got it. We can do one-seventh and add back the three-fourths. Do we still need an LCD here? Yes. What is our LCD? 28. Okay. If our LCD is 28, let's multiply by some versions of 1 to get equivalent fractions. What version of 1 can I multiply 1 seventh by to get a denominator of 28? Ashwin? Good. I can multiply 1 seventh by 4 fourths to get a denominator of 28. I can multiply 3 fourths by what version of 1, Michael? 7 sevenths to get that denominator of 28. Very good. Let's multiply to find the equivalent fractions. 1 times 4 is? 4 28ths. Good. And then if I have 3, four, three times 7 is? 21 28ths. So if I have 4 28ths and I have to add back 21 28ths, how many 28ths do I have? 25 28ths. Great. Do we get the same answer with method one and method two? Mm -hmm. So when we can solve one problem in two different ways and get the same answer, does that confirm that we were correct? Yes. Very good.